We've talked about how to create new entries and link them as either a component or a complex form of an entry. But what if the entry we're linking already exists? In this database, I have floor and first floor, and I could link those together. I could say that first floor is derived from floor. So let's click on first floor, and then when I go to Lexicon Edit, I will be in that entry. So I want to link it. I want to say that this one has components. So I'll click on the components field. I will click on the three dots, and I will start searching for the word that I want. Now, here's the word, but it actually has two senses. And so the, the lower surface of a room, the thing you walk on, that's not what I want to link to. So in this case, I will link it to a specific sense. Now, this is getting fairly involved. And if you are creating a subentry of a sense, you want to be quite careful and you would want to do testing to make sure that your audience can cope with that. But I'm going to demonstrate that you can. So I've chosen the word I want to link it to. Instead of clicking Entry, I've clicked Sense, and now here I can choose which sense that I want to link it to. I want the one that's the level of a building, not the, the bottom of a room. So I will click that, and I don't want to create a new entry. I want to say OK to link these two. So I will click OK, and so now it's filled these fields in. It tells me what the component is. And it, by default, it sets it to unspecified complex form type. And again here, because this one, I've now said that it's the complex form, um, we only see the minor entry here, not the whole information. So let's change the type. We don't want to leave it as unspecified complex form. In this case, I just want to call it phrase. So I don't actually see anything here that applies to what I want. A phrasal verb applies when there's a verb with a particle, like take out or put up. So that's not really right. So you may notice that down at the bottom, there's a blue link that says edit the complex form types. So if I click on that link, then that takes me over to the lists area to the complex form types list. So this is the list of all the default complex form types. I want to create a new one. I want to do it at the top level, so I will create this. This other one would create a child of whichever one I'm clicked on. So currently this one is selected. I want a sibling of that, so I will use the first icon. And I'm going to just call this phrase. Now phrase is also a morpheme type, so I might want to be careful about that, but it's appropriate for that to be a complex form type. And I want to be sure to fill in the reverse abbreviation also because they do both get used. So please don't forget that. So this is what goes on the other direction where the thing says I'm a phrase of something else. It can say I have a phrase or I am a phrase of. So please fill in all four of these fields. Otherwise, you'll be getting stars and it'll be confusing. And the rest is optional. Okay, so I was in the middle of creating a link, and it took me here. How do I get back? Well, I can use the back button that is right here. It took me to whatever I clicked on. I clicked on unspecified complex form, so I need to click one more time. And that takes me to the entry that I was in. Now, it did not set the complex form type to the thing I just created, so now I want to do that, but phrase is now in my list and don't forget to untick unspecified. So now I can click OK. Now if I'm curious how many of these complex form types have been used, there's this nifty control, display usage figures. If I tick that box, it tells me I have one that's unspecified and two that are derivatives. Well that's about to change. But anyway, that's a useful thing and you'll notice that this is available in quite a number of different dialog boxes. So keep an eye out for that. And so now it has changed it to phrase. And so up here in the minor entry, it says I'm a phrase of. 
Now, in this case, it gives the sense number. Floor to level of a building, it also gives the gloss. So let's go over to that main entry and see what that one looks like. We have that entry, and in sense two, we have the meaning, level of a building, and then it says first floor phrase. Okay, so in this case, because it's a subentry of a sense, it appeared in line, it's not indented. But it's the same principle that it's contained within that one, it's alphabetized according to that one. So that was demonstrating three things. One, you can link to a component that already exists. You don't have to create it. Two, you can create custom complex form types. And three, it's possible to have a subentry of a sense. Now, I will demonstrate one more thing. We have decide and we have decision. And if we look in the database, we also have make a decision. So if we want, we could go one more level. We could say that make a decision is a complex form of decision. So let's try that. So here I'm in make a decision. And I want to say what its component is. I will search for decision. Now they're all there. And again, remember you can show more fields if you want, if that's helpful. And so decision is what I want. I'm just going to link it at the entry level. Click OK. And so now this, well, OK, let me set the unspecified complex form. Let's change that to be a phrase. OK, so the minor entry says make a decision is a phrase of decision, which in turn is a derivative of decide. Now you get this extra bit C under. And the reason we have that is because there's two possible entries you could go to to look for the contents. You could go to decision or decide. In this case, it's saying you need to look up decide. Just for kicks, let's go look at decision and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's a minor entry. It says I'm a derivative of decide, but it does have this reference to the one that's a subentry of it. And then if I click on Decide, then it takes me to the top one. And it has two sub-entries, Decision and Make a Decision. Now, this is getting rather complex. It's an additional layer, and this isn't normally recommended. But there could be some occasions in which you want two levels of sub-entries. And then you would actually want to configure this one to indent one more notch you wouldn't want these to be indented at the same level. So those are some complicated things you may or may not want to do, but it's good to know that they're possible to do.